January the 24th, 2021. Guys, I want to go over a few things uh, in the New Testament because I think we are looking at some very rapid changes coming upon this nation and, to be honest, we every nation because we've seen the chaos from the political side of things and uh, I've seen a lot of people lately, uh, really for the last four years, are following a man whether it's the left side or the right side, are following men, let me say that. Some believe in some, some man on this side of the aisle is going to save them. Others believe this man on the other side of the aisle is going to save them. And that's a fatal mistake. There's so much energy being spent now by millions of people. And what the energy is being spent on is worry, worrying what's going to happen. We know that on one side of the aisle, we've got a lot of demonic pressure, and there's going to be a lot of tribulation coming from some of the people that have been put in power. But both sides are very corrupt, and both sides are very evil. And when you see, and you talk about um, things like, the whole world will wander after the beast and put their then they will follow a man and remember 666 is the number of a man think about it think of all the energy concern and worry that's been placed into these elections here and we're seeing a protest worldwide now and there's been demons that have been put in place that have been here since the beginning mostly in places of power, banks, politics, the entire industry, large businesses, controlling businesses. That's been put in place. They have been put in place for this day, time, and hour. They have been prepared for that. And with the changes that we're about to see coming down the pipeline, there's going to be a, the tribulation of man, not the wrath of God, but because of men, not heaven, here on earth, men, the tribulation. It's very important that you understand that and be able to rightly divide a few other things here. And um, I want to get into it, but again, guys, it's um, we are in the times to where instead of our energy and focus and uh, direction uh, being toward a certain man or a certain system. We have to look past that because it's not a battle of flesh. This is a ba battle of the, in the uh, spiritual domain, in the kingdom. And that's what uh, Satan has wanted to stop, or Lucifer, from the beginning, from the beginning of the garden. He did not want what's coming upon this planet to happen. He did not want the return of Jesus Christ. He would rather destroy than the house or burn it down before he vacates it. He doesn't really have a lot of choice, but because we're going through the tribulation of man, he's going to use man and men and women to do his bidding. And that's what's coming down the pipeline. So no man's going to stop me, step in now and save us. Okay? That's not going to happen. Christ is going to be the one that does that. So we've got to kind of shift our mind from the physical to the spiritual, or we're going to lose that spiritual battle. That's the one that counts, guys. Let me go to Matthew 24, um, first book in the New Testament. And if you look at Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the first three books, it's the same message three times for emphasis. And it's about the times that we're going through now. And as Christ came out of the temple and walked down across the stream and up on the side of the Mount of Olives, the, uh, some of his disciples, and I'm more than likely that Matthew, Mark, and Luke were there. It doesn't really name them, but if you read the first three books, you'll see that they all had the same story of this meeting on the Mount of Olives. It was it maybe some of the most important things 
in the letters in red that you can read for these days and times. But in, it says, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the building of the temple. And Jesus said unto him, See you not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. We saw that in the past. You know, uh, I think maybe 60 times there's been major wars and destruction in that in the Jerusalem area, in that part of the Middle East. So those things have happened. And it even goes to the spiritual side where Christ, his body, his temple was torn down. It was rebuilt in, in a very short period of time. What we're dealing with now is on he's Christ just what he just did was to awaken them away from the physical that they're looking at around them there on the mountain and put them into the spiritual domain and that is key now and he set up and as he set upon the Mount of Olives the disciples came unto him privately it wasn't a great crowd tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. I could almost stop right there on 24-4 and continue the whole, this teaching. Take heed that no man deceive you. How many people have rushed after one man in these last few years, given everything, do you see that? I hope you do. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. It's all about the physical, being able to separate the physical from the spiritual in reality. And so, many men, or many shall come in my name, saying, I'm Christ, and shall deceive many. And you see that with the fake preachers that we have now. And they're going to get worse. There's, there's a few that don't do it for big church and big money. And that teach just for the love of teaching and for the love of humanity. But many do not. You see the great super churches. You see the preachers teaching false doctrine. You see them teaching you to buy gold when it's, we're told in the Old Testament that that gold and silver will be cast into the street and cursed. Why? Because you won't be able to feed your kids with it. You, here, eat this bar of gold. Guys, that's physical and spiritual. Both sides. There's a teaching, as, if you, as you get to understand the Bible, you'll see that it's talking about the physical and the spiritual, but the main thing is what's coming now. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of war. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. That's what we've been seeing for a long time, the wars and rumors of wars. But the end is not yet, for nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there should be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in many places. We've seen that. We're past this. I'm not saying they have stopped, but we have seen this. But what does he say next? These are the beginning, not the end, not the middle, but the beginning of sorrows. These sorrows have already begun. If you look at the nations around this planet that have been affected and destroyed by wars, famines, pestilence, earthquakes, add tsunamis from... Uh, from earthquakes into there. Look at the millions that have been destroyed. Again, those are the beginnings. Here in 24 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sakes. And then many shall be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Think about this the patriots that lay down their life in battles and protecting this country and other countries. There's another battle coming. And will you be prepared to lay your life down for the most important battle? And the reason I say that is because the more this message is taught as we rapidly descend into hell on earth that we're, that's about to come down on us, we will be afflicted and we shall be killed and be hated of all nations for Jesus' name. Why? Because Satan is running. He hates that. 
and he's put his people in place. So now is the time to, as they say, put on the spiritual armor, and that is knowledge. God said my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, and it, I blame it on laziness and false preachers to teach you to fly away. You don't need to worry about this tribulation when the whole tribulation is the refinement of the human soul to pull you out of the physical realm and put you into the spiritual knowledge of God. Now, man cannot do it alone. You cannot figure it all out on your own. I cannot teach it perfect. I cannot even understand it perfectly because we are imperfect. But there's something coming. There's a teaching that's coming right before Christ sets his foot down. And I want to get into that because it's very important. But you have to be prepared for two things. Start studying. Prove yourself by your study. Study to show yourself approved. Why? Because you're getting your mind prepared for what's coming. Even if you don't understand it all, you're starting to open up those windows and let the light in. And then many shall be offended again and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Why? Because they've been taught wrong. And there's, so, there's as many Kenites on this planet as there are children of God. And again, those have been put in power. Why? Because Satan controls what you see in the political realm. Many in power of many places are not, they do not have your best interest. But again, the, like I said, I cannot teach it perfect because I cannot understand it perfect. I can only do the best I can. But you got to, again, prepare mentally, prepare physically because of the tribulation that's coming, and be prepared to suffer and die, if needed, for the Word of God. And so that's what I'm doing here. You don't think I'm going to be persecuted for this? And as time goes on more and more, you don't think channels will be taken down, <clears throat> everything taken from you, including your life. So now is the time to be brave. You, you know, a lot of channels don't talk about politics anymore. They don't, they don't want to do that. They don't want to lose their platform. I don't want to lose this platform because I try to use it for very good things. And I pray that God protects it. There's other ways to get the message out. But right now, it's time to damn the torpedoes full speed ahead. I'm telling you, it's getting very late in the day. It says, continuing 2411, And many false prophets shall rise and shall do what? Deceive many. But you know, judgment begins at the pulpit, preachers. Stop pushing your gold. Start teaching the truth. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. We've already seen that in just the separation of politics. And you don't think religion will do that? And, the, and tribulation will do that? But he that shall endure unto the end, not fly away, the same shall be saved. And in Greek it says the same shall be kept safe. And the, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Now, let me pull something up. Now, going back to this, to the gospel being taught all across the planet, and then the end shall come, it may not be exactly the way many people think it. And I want to bring in Revelation chapter 7 here on the right. It says, after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. That means the entire planet, holding the four winds of the earth, and the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Now, it does not say exactly what that is. To me, it's like a pause in time. Everything is paused for a moment. Why? And I saw another angel descending from the east. Who comes from the east, having the seal of the living God? It's Jesus Christ. Yeshua, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. And he said, stop, hold up. Let's stop this destruction for a moment. Saying, hurt not the earth, neither the seed nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. So you think these fake preachers 
and these people that have been except let me back up except for Christ's disciples and some very good enlightened teachers this has not been taught properly across the planet that's why the end has not come and people that pray oh lord bring it on let's end this misery you've got to have the patience of the saints because it's not the time but it's getting very close then it's because that we have not been taught properly and we have not been we do not have the full understanding that's about to change Again, I saw another angel from the east having the seal of the living God, Yeshua, and he cried with this loud voice, Don't hurt the earth and the sea yet, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed these servants and our God in our forehead. You see that? There's a pause right there at the moment. The seal of God is knowledge it is the same as the mark of satan in your mind in other words you believe the false antichrist that is there doing miracles is yeshua but he's telling us here all of this is going to happen before i come back and so when is that teaching when if we look at again go back over into matthew on the left the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations, and then the end is going to come. He stops the four angels back on the right in Revelation 7 that's about to do some destruction. And what do they do? They put the seal of the living God into our heads so that we have a perfect understanding because we are imperfect, but in the, the love of our Father, He does this. Are you prepared for it? Do you want to be sealed or do you want to have that mark of the beast, which is also a seal? Many think it's a chip. Many think it has to do with a, a vac, with a needle prick. Guys, it's way past that point. Those things are not good. But this has nothing to do with a chip or a tattoo. This is, if it's, when it says... The mark of the beast will be in your forehead or your right hand. Your forehead is your mind. What do you believe? That's why the seal in Revelation 7, till we have sealed the servants of God in their foreheads, that's what it, the same thing that Satan is trying to do. He wants to deceive you, and I'm, and I'm sure that they want to destroy as many humans as they can with whatever means. Mess your mind up. Okay, but there's another that's not I mean, those are not the mark of the beast. Sorry, guys. I, mean, I know a lot of even very intelligent Bible teachers teach that it's not a good thing. I'm not saying it is and I'm not saying take it. But that is not what God is talking about. The mark of the beast in your forehead is just like the forehead in Revelation 7, 3 that you see here on the right. Till we have sealed the servants of God in their foreheads the same way that Antichrist is trying to seal in your forehead and everybody else's forehead that he is the Christ. And in your hand, in your right hand, that's not a chip. That's symbolic, if you understand the languages, of your work, of what you do, your power in your right hand. Do you work for the church of the Antichrist? Do you, is that what you're supporting? with your power in your right hand and it goes on and i heard the number of them that were sealed it was 144,000. you can read this in chapter 7 of revelation plus many million millions more there were 12,000 from each of the tribes then millions more were sealed not by man not by me not by you not by a false preacher but by the four angels that christ sent and put, to put the seal in your forehead, his mark. Now, let's continue back over into uh, Matthew. Again, the end will come when this is preached through all the nations. How? Not by, not by us. We can only try to prepare the way. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, who, whoso readeth, let him understand. What men are being elevated to this position? 
how many people are wandering after the beast from coast to coast, from nation to nation. Think about it. Let them be in Jude that which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Why? When when you see the Antichrist stand up in this holy place, Christ has had enough. God has had enough. And it's fixing to come very quickly. And he's going to wait on these super preachers to finish off the job so that he can come? No. He's shutting that down and he's sending these angels. And they're going to put the seal in. It says, let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. It's coming too quickly. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. I've said this before. It has nothing to do with pregnancy. This is that you are you have been you've laid in the bed with Satan and you've been impregnated with his doctrine and you're giving suck to it with the power of your right hand but supporting those false doctrines. That is what chapter twenty I mean Matthew twenty four nineteen means. They're not he's not mad at a woman that has has had a child and is giving suck. That's a beautiful thing. He's telling you that Again, you've laid in bed with the false doctrine and you've been impregnated with it and you're giving suck to it, you're giving power to it. But pray that your flight not be in the winter, neither on the Sabbath. For then shall be great tribulation. Think about it. When you see the abomination, now the tribulation is building up with the wars and rumors of wars and all this, but it's about to get really, really tough. And People are going to be persecuted. Christian warriors are going to be persecuted, afflicted, and killed. But that death is only of the spiritual body, and it leads to eternal life. For, there shall, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor shall ever be. So you can't say, well, this happened back 2,000 years ago or 1,500 years ago because it has never been this, as bad as it's about to get and it never will be again. And it's about to get bad. So you've got now to really put on the armor. And that armor is knowledge, understanding, and love enough for your fellow man to not just take this knowledge and absorb it, but to spread it. Again, it will not be perfect. The perfect teaching is coming in Revelation 7, that last seal. But you can at least plant seeds, and if God wants it to grow, it will grow. The plant will grow. It doesn't matter what you do, and you can't hammer it into people. You plant the seed, move on, and if it's fertile ground, it will be watered. And there will be great things coming out of it. But what, did, what does it tell us in the Bible? Don't put your candle under a bushel. And it tells you, don't bury the penny and thinking that you needed to save that for the return of the Lord of the field. Why? Because he, then it's useless. Just saving yourself is not what this is about. It's about spreading the message of the truth of what's coming upon this planet. And you will, what, what happens when you bury that penny to save it? It's taken from you. That means that because you're not spreading it, you're forgetting it. Think about that. Have you ever taught something years ago and then forgot about it, didn't read anything, and then suddenly you go back and read it and say, wow, I forgot about this and that and some of the key things, right? So by you staying in the Word and you teaching people, you are educating yourself and the people around you. Let me continue with Matthew 24. For there shall, for then if any man, excuse me, let me back up, and except those days should be shortened, that's why he's, this pause is going to come. These four angels are coming very quickly to, to get the seal in because Satan is running rap, uh, rabid right now, guys. He knows he has but a short time. You can see it in the Capitol building right now. He knows, but he has a short time. And what they're going to do is try to destroy everyone that is not part of their cult, the Kenites. Then if any man 
shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. Why? Because he's not going to come down on the earth. You're going to see him coming into the clouds. He's not going to be walking in the desert or in some church or in a foreign land. Those are the false teachers. Those are the Antichrist instead of Christ. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and they shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they could shall deceive the very elect. They will deceive the nations, the very elect, which are learning and studying and spreading the word. They will not be deceived. For as the lightning coming out of the east, what does it say in, again, Revelation 7? That's where the truth is going to come, and that's where... Yeshua is coming from, and shineth even into the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will be the eagles, eagles gathered together. Matthew twenty four twenty nine. Immediately after, after the tribulation of those days, the tribulation of man. Why? Because we, so many have put their hope and faith in men and allowed this to happen. It says, So the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken with that great and mighty power that Yeshua is bringing. That's what's going to shake it. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of the trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Guys, what did they do? They went. He stopped it right before he got here, right before the time stopped. Everything was paused, and you were sealed. Then he comes. If you haven't seen that yet, then you've been lied to about when the return is. Matthew twenty-four thirty-two. Now learn a parable of the fig tree, which is branch, when his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh, just with all trees. But this particular branch of the fig tree was the nation of Israel that was destroyed and taken away. It was reclaimed in 47. It was in the world accepted it in 1948. This generation, our generation, says, So likewise, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the door. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. This is our generation. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Why? Because you're going to go past the millennium and into eternity with Christ, and he is the living word. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only, but as in the days of Noah, so shall also be the coming of the Son of Man. Great sin. Is happening here now. Great sin was happening there. For as in the days they, before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until that day that Noah entered into the ark. And read the book of Noah if you want to know what they were doing. And look at Sodom and Gomorrah. They knew not until the flood came and took them away. And, all, and so shall also be the coming of the Son of Man. Then shall be two in the field, and one shall be taken, and the other left tube grinding at the mill, one taken, the other left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. Now the false preachers, the demons, have taken this and said that you're going to be pulled out of here. You're going to be the first one taken. That's not what this is saying at all. Let me add something. Now moving to Matthew thirteen thirty for a moment. This is important. Again, who? what happened in the flood? The evil ones were taken away. And the family of Noah, the, of the generations of Noah, was saved because it was the Adamic bloodline. But here, Matthew thirteen thirty. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst thou not sow good seed in the field? For whence then hath it tares? It's supposed to be just wheat. And then you got the tares grown up, the Kenites and the sons of God. He said unto them, An enemy has done this. And the, he's talking about the Garden of Eden. The servant said unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? Put this in the spiritual realm. But he said, Nay, least while you gather up the tares, you read up, reap, or you root up also the wheat with them. In other words, you'll destroy everyone. Something happens to the earth now to tear the tares out, 
Everyone is destroyed. That's why people should not pray for destruction on this planet. It's not in our time to say that. It's not our place to say that. Because in God's plan, he will do the separation. Least while you gather up the tares, you root up the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. That harvest is when you see Christ coming. In the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather you together the first, the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them. Who is the first one taken? The tares. And bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat unto my barn. So this, this doctrine of you're going to be taken out of here, the first one's taken, like in the flood. You, that's the wrong place to be, my friends. Let both grow together until the harvest. In the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, who are the reapers? The four angels in seven. Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. And that's when you see the angel go to the four corners of the earth and gather God's elect up. But, the, but it's not the first ones. It's not the tares. It is the children of God. And that is after the tribulation. In Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, read it for yourself. After that tribulation is when we see Christ coming. You Guys, if you can't see we're already in tribulation, I don't know what to tell you. If you cannot already see but that the tribulation of man, because we have put our faith in man, and these, these men that are going to cause this tribulation, are not on our side. It's going to be after that. Then in chapter 8 of Revelation, it goes into the wrath of God. And there's, a lo there's going to be a lot of problems with that. But you've got to understand, it, because if you think, well, I'm going to float out of here, or in Thessalonians 1, 4, which is vastly misinterpreted, if you think that's going to happen to you, you're gathered first. And not only that, you have, you've seen some preacher in a desert or somewhere, but you haven't seen the son, the son of God coming in the clouds yet until you see that. You better not trust any man to save you. You understand that? If you do, you're considered, you're going to be gathered with the tares, and you're going to be bundled for the fire. Now let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you saw not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord, we see him coming in the clouds, we haven't floated off, shall not prevent them which are asleep. In other words, there's going to, there, many people have died. Many Christians have died. Many have been persecuted and killed. And they're waiting under that altar. Read Revelation. Saying, when are, when are we going to be, when is the revenge going to come for our blood? They are going first. They are already there, guys. When you die, you're not in the ground. You're not in the ground. Your spirit is still alive. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. We just read it in Revelation 7. With the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, the seventh trump. When is that? The day of God. When is What is the trump of God? It's the seventh trump. You understand that? You've got all six trumps. But then when that trump of God comes down, that moment of silence before you hear that, the dead in Christ will rise and then which we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and, shall, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. How are we going to be with the, with the Lord in our physical body forever? No, that's our spiritual body. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Now, it's important. Verse uh, 417, which is one of the most misunderstood verses about this end times there is and it's the most com most quoted by the false preachers and teachers when it says to meet the lord in the air guys we are in a free uh, piece of software let me pull this up 
and it's called eSword. Many of you have used it. I've had it on my website free for 10 or 12 years. But go to bpearthwatch.com, scroll down on the right, you'll see a blue box, download it. It has the definitions, the search engines, the, the Strong's Concordance of the true meaning of the Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic words. So and the way you do it, I'm in King James. I know it's hard to see right here at the top left. Keep, uh, click on King James Version Plus, and you'll see these numbers pop up. They're all preceded with a G for Greek. Okay, in the Old Testament, it will be an H for Hebrew. It's important to understand what this air is. Again, 1 Thessalonians 4.17, All that remains should be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. In the air. That's a word, Greek G109. That means to breathe unconsciously. An, an analogy to blow, air. It's called talking about the spiritual breath of life because when you're called up guys our physical bodies are not going because the whole the greatest earthquake we've ever seen is going to happen when Christ sets his foot down and everyone's changed into the blink of an eye that is not already asleep in Christ guys i know many of you understand this part of the bible there's a lot that do not and i can tell by some of the comments over the last 10 or 12 years when we went through this because we're really in getting into some trouble now look at who has taken over the power the minions of who has taken over the power look who's there playing these new games that's about to bring hell upon earth but again in the time of harvest, say the reapers, gather first the tares, bind them in the bundles to burn them, and gather the wheat into my barn. Study this, guys. Show yourself approved, as Timothy said. It's important. Once you understand it, spread the word. We are in those times. It's a heads up, guys. Be safe.